So folks, there's two things we're gonna use when we talk about this. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to comply with the new requirement of you putting on, uh, take your gun off and put it into a case in the state of Maryland uh, or take your holster off and put it in your case if it would fit. So for this purpose, we're gonna be using a cert pistol, which is a training gun that discharges lights. And then also what we're gonna use is, uh, you can buy any of these anywhere on Amazon or a gun store, but this is a box that will secure a gun. Now I can't put this in with a holster necessarily because it's not thick enough. So in this scenario, I would be where I'd have to take my um, firearm off, which I'm not a big fan of, but inadvertently we're gonna have to deal with this. So we're gonna have to deal with it. So those two things we're gonna use today. So for the purpose of this, I've already I've already retrieved my, my gun box, right? Which may be, underneath the uh, seat or behind me, but for now I got it. So you're parked. So we're gonna now have to take our firearm off. Again, if you can take your holster, that's great, but you're gonna have to put your holster and everything back on when you get back to the car, that can be difficult. So if we're gonna do the firearm, there's a couple things you gotta be aware of. Well, one, very few have ever trained of pulling a firearm out of a holster while seated. Second, you have things all around you that you've never dealt with that you don't think are going to cause a problem but they probably will particularly this thing called a steering wheel you want to stay away from so here's the first thing i want you to do set your chair to where it's going to go low and back as far as you can get it and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull myself away from this stuff i don't want this in the way and i'll show you why in a little bit I want this to be able to sit on my lap or sit like right here. Now, when you go get your firearm, it's critical for you when you get this. Now, I'm a lefty, so if you're right, you can be pulling it out of here. And that can cause a problem because you can hit here or you can do all kinds of stuff because there's something here. Generally, when you draw, there's nothing next to you or in front of you that you got to deal with. But in my case, I'm coming out. It's critical. And believe me, I've seen it enough. People come out with their finger on the trigger. It is critical that you come out with that finger away from it for your safety and others around you, if you got to do this, please finger off the trigger. Once you have this, you want to keep this low enough because I'll show you when we're outside why, but you don't want people to be able to see this. And then you want to be able to put this inside the box, which I'm just laying it here, but inside the box, and then the box would go under or it would go in the back, wherever you're going to do. So that's that. Now, how do we deal with it outside? I'm going to show you in a minute, but let me show you the reason why I don't want it to be like this. So you have your firearm case and you're gonna drive like you normally do. And some people truly get up on the wheel. I mean, you truly get up on the wheel, right? And so you have a problem. And what the problem is gonna be is when you get this gun out. Particularly if you don't, if you don't keep that finger off the trigger, I'm telling you, the legislators with this law put you in a position that can inadvertently be very dangerous and even slash deadly. I will make a prediction. Um, people will discharge guns inside of cars. People will shoot themselves inside of cars. It, it won't make the news because it won't look good, you know, if people do it, but uh, it's going to happen. And here's one of the reasons why. You come out, you're not used to this. So, so I come out, and, and when I come out, look what just happened. Look what just happened. I just literally hit this thing. So I'm coming out. Now, let's add this. Let's add my finger on the trigger, okay? I come out, I'm, I'm looking over here, I hit that, finger goes through, and look where, where, look where shot goes. Shot's going right into my leg, okay? Guys, it could even get worse for you here. I mean, shot's going right here. You, you hit arteries here, you won't even call 911. You will die in your vehicle. You have got to get away from this thing if you're going to do it inside. And you need to get back, and please make sure this is always, always for your safety and those around you, Please. The other thing is don't do this because everybody and their brother now knows you have a gun if they're anywhere around watching you. And we're going to talk about that right now. So for now, let's finish step two and let's go outside. Okay. So as we get out of the vehicle, you have a little bit of an issue. Who's around? This is a concern. Um, are, is anyone going to see you for a number of reasons? I'm going to explain it to you and then where you're going to put it, whether you're putting it in the back or you're putting it in the trunk. 
you have the same issue. The firearm has to come off of you to be able to get it into the case. So in this scenario, this case is right underneath the back seat. I'm going to step in here. I have the gun case right here. I'm obviously not going to pull the firearm out and put it out here. There's too many people visible. And so you're going to have to do it inside. Now, let me give you a tip to this. As you're sitting here, and you're going to put this gun case away. You're probably not going to take the holster off. Because if you have to take the holster off, even though it's safer, much safer, you're probably not going to do it because one, will the holster fit in? And two, if you have a holster that's inside or outside the waistband, if it's connected in any way to the belt, particularly in outside the waistband, you're going to have a real issue because you're going to have to take the belt off. Now you're half undressing. It's like going through TSA. You don't want that. So let's talk about just removing the gun. <laughs> that being said, this is extremely dangerous and extremely irresponsible of any legislator to put this on a constituent. And extremely irresponsible of any legislator to put this on a constituent. For you to pull a gun out of a holster when you're not using it is beyond irresponsible. But the law's the law. And you're either going to have to find a case and you're going to have to undress to get the entire holster off, or you're going to have to start dealing with how to pull a gun out uh, in an environment you shouldn't be pulling it out in. So let's address that just in case you put yourself in this situation and you have to learn how to deal with how am I going to do it. So when you do this, you don't want to do it here. The reason I don't want to do it here is my case, I'm a lefty, and it's here, right? In your case, if you're a righty, it would be here. Again, people would see it. So what you want to do is you want to turn so the gun is facing into the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself like this. Now, you can't see this as much as uh, you could if I was the other way around. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to actually clear it here, and I'm just going to slide it into my case. And then at that point, I'll have it in the case and slide it back underneath, secure it, and walk away from the vehicle less people see it. Here's the reason why, and this is a concern for me. If Mindy, Molly, and Missy are coming from their 11-13 traveling soccer game and they see you with a firearm, their mother could freak as they're coming out of their, you know, their Whole Foods or their Target or wherever they're shopping. And you're in a shopping center or someplace you have to go. Freak. The second problem is, is what happens if crackhead Carl happens to be around because you're not in, a, in, a, in this environment, you're in a different environment, or you're someplace where there is a guy watching your every move. So now you got a problem. You're probably going to come home with a brick through your window when you come back to it, and your gun has been stolen. Or worse, they don't even need to break the window if they just wait for you to come back, since you don't have a firearm, and with a knife hold you up, and to take your firearm from you in your case, which they can break. It's not impossible to do. This is reckless legislation. It's irresponsible, and I want to leave you with a math problem. If I made five stops today, that means five times I either have to take my firearm off of me and secure it, and five times bring it back and put it on me. That's 10 movements in a day. If 100,000 people are carrying firearms in the state of Maryland in a day, and they make those five stops, that is one million unholstering and holsterings that have to take place in a, just a single day in this state. There will be inadvertent discharge, negligent discharges. There's gonna be people that are gonna end up because they're inside your vehicle shooting themselves. This is gonna be a nightmare, and it's gonna increase guns on the street and it's gonna increase inadvertent discharges of firearms, and it's a horrible piece of legislation, but I want you to work on the skill between in the car and out of the car, because it's something now you're gonna to need to do in the state of Maryland.